Family Theatre presents Jimmy Durante and May Clark. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Leading Lady, starring Mae Clark. And now, here is your host, Jimmy Durante. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives. If we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theatre urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Leading Lady, starring Mae Clark as Judith. I'll get it, Judith. Hello? Who? Oh, sure, sure. Put him on. Uh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Hey, Judith, it's the police commissioner. Oh, how nice for us. It's probably about the tiara. Do you want to talk to him? Oh, it's probably about a dozen free tickets for the Saturday matinee. I do not want to talk to him. He's a great fan of yours, Judith. Don't do any harm to be nice. I am nice. I'm nice as pie. I'm just not here, hmm? Yeah, all right. I'll say you're rehearsing or something like that. Okay, Jenny, put him on. Hello, Commissioner. Yeah, good to hear your voice. Yeah, yeah, we're back at the same old stand again. Sorry you missed the opening night. Great. She's great. Yeah, yeah, I was just telling her that... Huh? No, no, Judith isn't here right now. No, they're running lines. Just a brush-up downstairs, you know. Yeah. Yes... Yeah, I consider myself the most honored producer on Broadway, having Judith Carter as a leading lady. Shh! Yeah, why, what? Hey, oh, no, 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 Commissioner. That was just my secretary. Shh! Oh, yeah, 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 about the tiara. Well, the insurance company's afraid it might be stolen. No, no, no. Judith just wears it on stage during the play. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I see, I see. Well, maybe that is our best bet. Now? Well, all right, sure. Sure, we'd be glad to talk to him. Thanks again, Commissioner. Bye. Well, Mr. Mitchell, you honored producer. They're sending us a private detective. Oh, this is very silly, Mitch, and I'm beginning not to like it. Well, it's all we can do, Judith. They can't put a policeman on this kind of a job. It would set a precedent. Oh, you and your publicity men... Why must it be a real tiara I wear in the play? People don't go to the theater to look at jewelry. It was just an idea. A bad one, I admit it. But now the publicity's out on it. Well, then run an ad saying I won't be wearing a real tiara. It's so simple. No, it's not, Judith. A lot of people have already bought tickets. To see the tiara, I suppose. Uh, to see you. Of course not the tiara. But some smart lawyer could pick us up for misrepresentation. Oh, all right. Who's the detective? What's he going to do, guard me? Eh, only for a week or so, just to keep the insurance company quiet, that's all. Then I will run an ad saying we're not going to have the real tiara anymore. That'll explain it, and the thing will all be settled. A watchdog? Yeah, just while you're wearing it on stage. Won't kill you, will it? With a derby and a big cigar. All right, all right, go ahead and shoot me. So I made a mistake. <laughs> oh, Mitch, you can get yourself into the craziest situations, and me. Well, anyhow, you'll get to meet yourself a real life private eye. He's on his way over here now for approval. <laughs> How much do you suppose that old thing's really worth? The tiara? Oh. Eight, ten thousand dollars? It's diamonds. <laughs> Well, I'm off to the hairdresser. What time is it? Yeah, 4.30. Who's it tonight? The account executive? No more account executive. He went to the coast. Good, good. He was wrong for you. He was, Mitch. I'm beginning to think they all are. Judith, if you were my 35-year-old daughter, I'd send you to Memphis to get married. I'm only 31. Besides, I've never played Memphis. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'd like that explained. 
I'd really like a step-by-step -step explanation of that crack. Yeah, in just a minute. Yeah? Okay, send him in. Who is it? The private eye. Goodbye. S stay, stay for the laughs. You'll have to meet him anyhow. Uh, Mr. Mitchell? Yeah, yeah, come in, come in. My name's Wheeler, Phil Wheeler. Yeah, sit down, sit down, Wheeler. Of course, you know Miss Judith Carter. Why, yes, yes, it's it's pleasure. You're a very nice-looking watchdog, Mr. Wheeler. Uh, what? I think I'm being funny. Have you been a private detective very long? No, no, not long, a year or two. The commissioner tell you what this is all about? No, I didn't talk to him. Captain Hearn down at the 4th Precinct said it was about an attempted jewel robbery, but... Uh, no, no, I... no, it isn't that big. No one's tried to steal anything. Oh. But Judith wears this diamond business on her head during the second and third acts of the play. Yeah, and... I read about it in the paper, the tiara. Yeah, real diamonds. Don't you think it's a clever idea, Mr. Wheeler? Imagine real diamonds right on my head. Doesn't it make you want to dash up to the box office? Well, I, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> That's what I like, Mr. Wheeler. A man of conviction. A man who'll make a decision and stick by well, What's the rib for? I just can do a job. And turn it off, will you, Julie? All right, Mr. Wheeler, I'll turn it off. What do you private detectives charge? By the day, 20 in expenses. That's ridiculous. We'll pay you 15. And Judith, I'm the one who's picking up the check. And you'll pay him 15. That's equitable. He only works three hours a night. Oh, I make such a big thing of it. It's 15, Mr. Wheeler. Do you take it? Looks like I'll have to. The curtain's at 8.20 sharp. Be outside my dressing room by 8.15. All right. I guess that's all. See you this evening, Mr. Wheeler. Yeah, 8.15. So long, Mr. Mitchell. Hey, so long, Wheeler, and good luck. He's uh, cute. Hey, what's gotten into you? That guy probably needs every dollar he can lay his hands on. Oh, I wanted to see if he'd fight for it. Sometimes I don't know what goes on in your head. You're a wealthy woman. You walk down the street, people recognize you. Pay him the 20. Pay him 25. I'll pay him. Hey, what gets into you? What are you searching for? I don't know. Some sort of a man. Fooey. He is cute. Cute but spineless. Isn't that the way you like him? And he's worried about something, too. Did you notice that? Yeah, probably his bank balance. No, he's got something on his mind. Some problem. Judith... You're getting that look on your face. Am I? Now, remember, I've got a run-of-the-play contract with you. Uh-huh. Judith. Judith? Mm -hmm. hey, you're not listening to me. Curtain in five minutes. Curtain in five minutes. Yes? Who is it? It's me, Miss Carter. Wheeler. Come in. Uh. Right on time, Mr. Wheeler. Very good. Thanks. Oh, uh, this is the object of all the excitement, the tiara. Uh, but I thought it was supposed to stay in the box office safe until I picked it up. Yes, yes, it was. Pretty, isn't it? Well, it's pretty expensive. You shouldn't have taken it out of the safe, Miss Carter. Oh, don't play private detective so hard, Phil. It is Phil, isn't it? It's Phil. But really, Miss Carter, that's an expensive piece of jewelry. If somebody wanted to grab it... They... Oh, this. Nobody'd have it. I guess you don't read the papers. In the last three months, right here in the New York area, there have been almost half a dozen jewel robberies. Oh, <gasps> impending disaster. I love it. Is it a gang? Do the police think it's all the work of one gang? Well, it may be very funny <laughs> to you, Miss Carter. A gang of international jewel thieves led by a tall, dark man with a black beard and a malacca cane. Okay, okay, but you're paying me $15 a day to watch 20. It. What? I mean 25. Tw 25, but oh, this afternoon you said that... Of course, that was this afternoon, Philip. You've been promoted. <laughs> but I, I don't get... Oh, you can use the extra money, can't you? Use it? I'll say I can use it, but... I thought so. Philip, what's worrying you? Why, nothing. Don't lie to me. Something's worrying you. What is it? Do you have a, a family to support? Well, in a way... Uh... You mean you're married? No, no, no. But I live with my mother. Oh, oh she's sick, isn't she? No. Curtain in two minutes, Miss Carter. Yes! What's wrong with her? Well, my mother? Well, there's nothing. Well, well, then what's bothering you? Maybe I can help. I'd like to help. <laughs> there's, there's nothing you can do, Miss Carter. Nothing anyone can do. It's about money, though, isn't it? Well, in a way, yeah, but uh, 
I've got to work it out myself. Oh, well, I'm on now. Uh, we'll talk about this after the show. Oh, but really, Miss Carter, No they... buts about it, Philip. You're in trouble, I can tell. You don't understand, Mitch. I understand the whole thing perfectly. This handsome Seamus with the baby blue eyes has got you on a merry-go-round. No, you're wrong, Mitch. That tiara was supposed to go back a week ago. It's still around, and so is he. Phil's all mixed up inside. He, he needs help. That's why I want to keep him on. Yeah, steak sandwiches at Armand's every night after the show. Is that help? I'm just trying to give him a breath of air. A look at, at our world. You've fallen for him, haven't you? No, absolutely, positively, unequivocally, no. I... I like him, yes. Mm-hmm. Baby, you're going to be sorry. Take my word oh, for it. Oh, Mitch, can't you see? Yeah, I see, I see fine. This private eye of yours is a phonus balonus. He's a sweet, confused guy. He's fishy, baby. He's as fishy as an aquarium. Mitch, I've never had to tell you to mind your own business. Then don't start now. Something else about your Mr. Wheeler. He's buck hungry. Mitch, I've heard enough. He hasn't got a problem. He just loves That's that dollar. That's all, Mitch. Okay, okay, okay. I don't expect you to understand this, Mitch. I, I can even see why you think it's, well, maybe even foolish. But I, I want to help Phil find himself if I can. All right, I'm out of this, Judy. I've said my piece, and now I'm out of it. You can waltz this guy around any way you want. Don't worry, Mitch. I will. <laughs> I... I guessed Mr. Mitchell and you had had some kind of a scrap, Judith. Oh, we have them all the time. Uh, I just wanted to bring you up to date, Phil. You mustn't mind him. He's... Well, I guess you'd call him suspicious. Of me? Of you, of anyone, everyone. Uh, he bothers me. I'm his galatea. It is what? Oh, that's Shaw. You know, a play, Bernard Shaw, Pygmalion. Oh, oh. He got the idea from a man who made a statue, Galatea, and then fell in love with it. Pygmalion made the statue, and much later, Shaw wrote the play, you see? Yeah, I, I see. Yeah. Well, I'm Mitch's galatea, except that he's not in love with me. I'm, I'm old enough to be his daughter. You mean he's old enough to be your father? Oh, that's right. Do you want to dance? <sighs> no, I already have. It's a snare and a delusion. Tell me about your mother, Philip. Eat your sandwich and tell me about your mother. Well, she's my mother, that's all. Well, you, you love her. Sure, I love her. Mother love. My huh? mother lives in Chicago with my father. Uh, are you buck hungry, Philip? Uh, am I? A well, Mitch says that you love that dollar. Do you love that dollar? <laughs> like anything else, I guess the things you love most are the ones you don't have. No. Philip, that scans. You're a poet. The things you love most are the ones you don't have. <laughs> Why, you and Nick Kenny. Uh, what about your sandwich, uh, Aren't you hungry? Oh, chicken salad. That's my sandwich. No, no, I'm not. You know, I don't get this, Judith. I don't get it at all. What are we doing here? Well, you're my private detective. They might steal the tiara. It, the tiara's back in the box office safe. But even so, they might steal it. I'm glad you realize it. <laughs> Philip, two weeks ago, you walked into Mitch's office with a look on your face, a funny look on your face. What, what are you chasing? What are you after? Well, maybe that uh, dollar you were talking about. No, you're fishy, Philip. You're very fishy. As an aquarium. Look, if you don't like Mr. the way... Mr. Uh, Philip Wheeler? Yes? Excuse me, sir. You're wanted at the bar. A gentleman. Oh? Oh, sure, sure. I'll be right back, Judith. Of course. Now, which way is the... Oh, right this way, sir? I won't be a moment. Yes, you will. You'll be a couple, maybe three. Uh, that uh, gentleman, sir, wearing the gray hat. Thanks. Oh, here. Oh, thank you, sir. Hello, Phil. Hello. Any action yet? No, nothing definite. What about the girl? Oh, <laughs> that's really a great question. I could write a book about the girl. No, I mean, does she suspect anything? No, no, I don't think so. You had a good look at those diamonds? A good long look. They're just right. Play along another week or so. We don't want to fumble the ball. We won't. See you, Phil. Yeah, see you. Well, there she is, Mr. 
Mr. Wheeler. Locked up for the night again, good and tight. Yep. Even if somebody wanted to bust in that box office there, they'd never crack that safe. She's a beauty. Yeah. Uh, can't say, can I give you a lift? You know, you'll drown in that rain. No, no, thanks, Harry. I'll walk. I'm just over on 48. Well, if you don't mind getting soaked. No. The air will do me good. Good night, Harry. Well, good night, Mr. Wheeler. Wheeler? Yeah? Let's step into the doorway here, out of the rain. We'd like to talk to you. Sure. This is my pal. How you do? Uh, hi. We want to talk to you. About those diamonds you're standing around all the time? Oh, yeah? Can we talk to you? Depends on what you got to say. Well, we were thinking maybe we could talk money to you. All right. We're all talking the same language, then. You don't know us, huh? I don't know your names. We've been very busy in this town. We come in from Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland, Ohio. What's your proposition? Well, we got a fence. We'll take that tire if we can get it. Yeah, but we ain't no good at safes and stuff like that, see? Who sent you here? How do I know this isn't a phony? You put the word out, didn't you? Your own guy sent us. What guy? A uh, big guy who on 3rd Avenue. He wears a gray hat. Name of who? Name of nothing. We don't ask no names. How do I know you can handle a job like this? You have to do it during the show. All sorts of people backstage. Look, you read the papers? Yeah. You read them last month about the heist over on the east side? Big party going on downstairs all the time. Yeah. Paper said 18,000 bucks worth taking. Yeah, yeah, I remember. My lucky. Yeah. Did bring four. What do you think this will bring? The fence will go uh, 3,500. Now, it can't look like I'm in on it. Oh, don't worry, it won't. <laughs> you, you, you're figuring to have it uh, both ways, huh? You blame me? No, I don't blame you. That Carter dame's nice. Well, we got a deal in it. We got a deal. Come on up to my place. We'll work it out. Fifteen minutes, first night cut. Fifteen minutes, first night cut. Fifteen minutes, first night That you, Bill? Yeah. Well, come in. It's open. The Crown Jewels. Hello, Wheeler. Evening, Mr. Mitchell. Let me have that, Phil, will you? I'm running a little behind schedule. Yeah, sure, yeah. Well, how's the private detective business, Wheeler? Oh, it's getting along. How many other clients you got besides us? A couple. None of them this study, though. Yeah, I bet they aren't. Mitch? What's going on, Judith? Did I walk in on something? In a way, yes. We were talking about you, Philip. Yeah, she was talking about you. I was just listening. We, uh, we were wondering... Have you ever thought of going on the stage? What, you, you mean acting? Oh, well, don't look so shocked. You might be very good. You look good. You're tall. Yeah, so's our doorman. Mitch? Well, I've never been on a stage in my life, Judith. Thanks, but no, I don't think it'd work. Amen. Mitch, you promised to let me handle this and... Oh, I'll get it. Hello? I'm not here. Yeah? Oh, okay. Sure, I'll be right out. Who was it? A stage door, a couple of baskets of flowers for you. Flowers? From whom? They didn't say. I'll go out and have them brought in. Isn't there a note? No, they didn't say. I'll be right back. Are these the flowers for Miss Carter? Yeah, that's right. We're supposed to deliver them personally. All right, follow me. You got the money with you? Yeah, we got it. Oh, come on, come on, let's have it. After we get the tiara. There won't be time, then. There'll be time, don't worry. Uh, this her dressing room? Yeah, hold it a second. Okay, no one's looking. Get the handkerchiefs up on your faces. You ready? Yeah, open up. Flowers, and it's not even opening night. All right, lady, let's have that thing off your head. Hey, what is this? Right, climb up, pop. Come on, lady, come on. Philip, who are these men? They put a gun on me, Judith. What could I do? That's it, lady. Take it off and hand it to us. Yeah, some bodyguard you are. You want me to get myself killed? No, Phil, of course not. Here, take it. Much obliged, Miss Carter. Now, everyone just stay put till we're out of here and there won't be no trouble. Phil, don't try any heroics. It isn't worth it. Don't worry, Judith. He won't. I don't see you sticking your neck out, Mitchell. Well, I'm not paid to. Simmer down, all of you. Five minutes to cut, Miss Carter. Five minutes. Say okay. Yes. All right. Now, keep this straight. 
I'm only going to say it once. It'll take us about a minute to get clear of this place. You can go real smooth if you wanted to, but if you don't, someone might get hurt. Not you, but someone out there you like. Everything clear? Come on, Turk, they got it. Now, wait a minute. Forget it, Shamus. You're out of luck. Phil, what are they talking about? Why, you dirty double-crossing... Easy, mister, easy. You should have collected first. Hey, this is beginning to add up here. Phil, Phil, you knew all about this. You were in it with them? All right, what of it? You didn't have to do that. I would have helped you. Mr. Carter, can I see you for a moment? Who's that? It's, 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 it's the call boy, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. it's the call boy. Uh, you better let him in. No, no, Turk, stay put. That ain't the same guy knocked before. I tell you, it's the call boy. Shut up. Mr. Carter. Shove me right out. You think someone's been tipped off? I don't know. Come on, lady, you're going with us. Me? You, get over here. Then yeah, don't do it, Judith, don't get do it. Get out of here, Pop, and she goes along to make sure we do. Use your heads, you can't both hide behind her. We don't figure to, pretty boy. You're coming too. get over here. Look, give me a break. Oh, for heaven's sake, Phil, at least show a little backbone. Yeah, Shamus, you're letting the lady down pretty hard. Well, maybe not. Oh, what are you doing? Let go of my hand. Get down, Judy. Turk, take him. Uh, you little rusty, Henry. I told you get down. See how you like this one? I hear you. Ow, don't. Ow. Take it. Hey, Phil. Hey. Phil, you all right? Yeah. Yeah, we're okay. Okay, Lieutenant. Lieutenant? What, Lieutenant? Yeah. What's going on here? Lieutenant Wade, ma'am. Police Department. All right, boys. Take him down and book him. Hey, what's the story here, Wheeler? Are you a cop? I mean a real cop. That's right, Mr. Mitchell. Yeah, but the commissioner said he couldn't give me a real cop. We had to do it this way, Mr. Mitchell, to get Turk and his pal out in the open. So you made Wheeler pose as a private eye. Yeah, it worked out pretty good. We've been trying to pin something solid on those two ever since they hit town. Well, how do you like that? Sorry, we had to cut it so close, Miss Carter. It's perfectly all right, Lieutenant. Yeah, well, um, I gotta get down to the station and book those birds. You coming along, Phil? Yeah, a little while. I'll see you down there. Goodbye, Miss Carter. Goodbye. Uh, uh, I'll see you out, Lieutenant. Uh, I take it all back. Wheeler. Don't mention it. Well, Judy, I... Don't talk to me. Get out. Get out? I've never been so humiliated in my whole life of all the deceitful, underhanded... What's going on here? And I thought you needed help. I thought you were weak and confused. I had put on some kind of act. Some kind of an act? You were laughing at me. All the time laughing your head oh, off. That's crazy. I was doing a job. Oh, cute, but spineless. That's what I thought you were. And all the time you were nothing but a big, flat-footed cop. Where do you get that nothing but stuff? Get out! Get out of my sight! Curtain, two minutes, Miss Carter. Do you want us to hold it? <laughs> no. I'll be there. Are you deaf? Go away. I'm not going anywhere until I tell you something, lady. I won't listen. Yes, you will. I just now figured you out. <sighs> I was even going to make an act out of you. Isn't that rich? You're not sore because I did this behind your back. That's exactly why I'm sore. I can't stand a sneak. Well, you can't stand anything else. I'll prove it to you. Oh, you're insane. Now get up. As long as I measured down to your estimate of a man, I was in good. That's the silliest thing I ever heard. Now, will you please get out of here? I'll be late for my entrance. Oh, no, you won't. That's one thing you'll never miss. That's part of what's wrong with you. I'm not listening. You don't mind being deceived. For all you knew up until a few minutes ago, I deceived you about that robbery. You thought I was in on it. You were even willing to forgive me. Just as long as I didn't do anything out of character, as long as I was weak and sick and spineless, you could stand it. Rot. That's rot. It's when I turned out to be a cop instead of a quivering neurotic. That's when you got mad. I thought I was helping you. I thought you needed me. Is that wrong? I, I just wanted to help. What's wrong with helping someone? Stop blubbering. You do everything on cue. All the world's a soap opera. <laughs> You're a vicious Brute. Yeah, I notice you've stopped crying. Now I'm a vicious brute. All men are either helpless weaklings or vicious brutes. Only women can be both good and strong. Oh, shut up. You've been playing Sean Ibsen too long. What do you know about Sean Ibsen? Plenty. We'll talk about it some night. You know something else? I'm in love with you. Ha <laughs> ha I wouldn't marry you if you were the last man on earth. Well, look around you. Maybe I am. I could scratch your eyes out. <laughs> could you, Judy? Oh, no. Judy, no, no, don't, don't cry. You, you saved my life tonight. Yeah, yeah, I figured I might be able to use it sometime. <laughs> you are a vicious brute. Beats being a helpless weakling. You know, maybe it's the other way around. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. <laughs> Miss Carter, Miss Carter, you're wrong. <laughs> coming, I'm coming right now. Bill, 
you said you thought you knew what I meant? About things being the other way around, yeah. 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 But it only works in pairs, honey. Yeah. If I could be the helpless yeah. brute, uh, would you? Yeah. Yes, Phil. I'd love to be the vicious weakling. This is Jimmy Durante again. You know, if there's one guy who makes my blood boil, it's the guy who wants you to think that Christmas is only the time when Santa Claus comes instead of what it is, the birthday of the Son of God. He's the guy who tries to hide Easter under the bunnies and the colored eggs and tries to make you think of Thanksgiving as only the day for eating turkey. That guy really gets my nose out of joint. And you know why? Because he's spoiling our holidays. He's making us forget what they're really for. Take Thanksgiving, for instance. To my way of thinking, Thanksgiving is about the greatest national holiday anybody ever thought up. It's the day for thanking Almighty God for the nice things he's done for you. You don't need a turkey and all the trimmings or a football game to watch to keep Thanksgiving well. All you need is a memory to remember all the friends God has given you, the country he gave you to live in, and all the blessings we take for granted the other 364 days of the year. It's nice to have a Thanksgiving dinner, but I think you keep Thanksgiving a whole lot better if you take time out to pray, to kneel down with your family and pray to God, telling him how grateful you are for the things he's given you and for what he's done for you. And when you do that, you're really celebrating Thanksgiving the way it ought to be celebrated. And when you say your Thanksgiving prayers, do it as a family, for the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed The Leading Lady, starring Mae Clark. Jimmy Durante was your host. Others in our cast were John Daner, Leo Curley, Barney Phillips, Robert Emlin, Lou Krugman, and Charles Delaney. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present Captive Audience, starring Audrey Totter. Claude Aikens will be your host. Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. <laughs>